morning. My name is Hans Fink, and I'm going to try to explain you a little bit about the endothelial glycocalyx. Now, the endothelial glycocalyx is part of the vascular wall, and over the years, we've been studying the, the presence of glycocalyx and its implications for vascular health. So I'm going to demonstrate to you a few of those data about the implications of the glycocalyx for vascular function, and also tell you a little bit more about the recent technology that we've developed to measure glycocalyx in humans and to test for the implications uh, for patient groups uh, with uh, different risks for cardiovascular disease. Well, this is a, a movie of a, a high magnification movie of a small blood vessel showing you individual red blood cells flowing through the lumen of this small vessel. Now, on the side, you see those black lines uh, demarking the position of the vascular wall. Now, if you look uh, closely, you see that individual red cells uh, do not touch the vascular wall, and there is some space in between the vascular wall and the flowing red blood cells. Now, for a long time, there was this discussion going on whether this space is just filled with fluid or whether this is secret invisible protective gel in between the vessel wall and the red cells, thereby preventing the red cells from touching the vessel wall and preventing damage. Now, after a few years, we started developing new imaging technologies and showing pictures like these with electron microscopy that that space in between the vessel wall and the red blood cells is actually filled with complex bush-like structures like these that we call the glycocalyx. The glycocalyx is um, produced by the vessel wall themselves and consists out of polysaccharides to which proteins bind and a lot of fluid binds making it gel. So if you look at the slide you can see that the dimension of the glycocalyx is much larger than the thickness of the wall itself. So it forms a significant compartment shielding the vessel wall from direct contact with the flowing cells and high fat substances in the bloodstream. Now I'm going to show you a few of the consequences uh, what happens when glycocalyx is damaged. Here you see a large vessel and we know in large vessel disease that not all the vessels become diseased but that the disease sites are uh, confined to predisposed sites that are more vulnerable than other sites. So on the lower left you see one of those sites where we typically have lesion development. And we measured the thickness of the glycocalyx at these sites and compared the thickness of glycocalyx at other sites in the same vessel that, be st that stay healthy over time. And indeed we confirm, as you can show on the right the bo bottom corner, that at those sites with the more vulnerable uh, lesion development, glycocalyx is always much smaller than other sites uh, with a thick glycocalyx. So uh, lesions develop at vascular sites where the glycocalyx is uh, less well able to protect the vessel wall against cholesterol. Now here you see what happens if we infuse cholesterol into the bloodstream. So the green uh, dye that you see here is high fat cholesterol injected into the bloodstream. Um, and the top of the, of the image shows you the lumen where the blood flows and the bluish dots are the vessel wall. So on the left hand side you see part of the vessel wall with a thick like calyx that protects the vessel wall against leakage of the green dye, the high cholesterol, into the vessel wall. And indeed you see that the, the cholesterol is confined to the luminal side of the vessel wall and doesn't leak into the vessel. Now on the right hand side I show you an image uh, of what happens when you look at the side with a thin glycocalyx. Now this side is less well protected and you see that already within 15 minutes after injection of the cholesterol into the bloodstream a lot of the green molecules and a lot of the cholesterol leaks across the endothelial cells and starts accumulating in the vessel wall. Now this is the first step in activating the inflammatory response that causes uh, vessel wall disease and atherosclerosis. Another consequence of uh, damaged glycocalyx is shown here in this video. Here we see a small uh, venule where blood flows um, through the lumen and to study the effect of uh, glycocalyx on the level of adhesion of inflammatory cells to the vascular wall, we can inject a, um, a saline solution or a solution containing enzymes to break down glycocalyx and start measuring the level of adhesion of the white, uh, white little particles you see there which are the leukocytes or the inflammatory cells. Now on the control conditions that you can see on this image, those little white uh, particles slowly roll over the surface of the vessel wall, patrolling to see if there is an infection. But as long as there is no infection, they do not stick to the vessel wall and they do not start the inflammatory process. Now on the next slide, I can show you two examples of what happens when glycocalyx is damaged. 
So on the left side you see an example of what happens when glycogen is damaged by exposure to oxidized LDL cholesterol, which is very toxic and we know plays a part in the development of atherosclerotic disease. So the blue curve on the left shows you the normal levels of uh, sticking leukocytes, sticking inflammatory cells to the vessel wall. And the normal level is very low because there's no infection and there's no initiation of vascular disease. Now the, the red dots demonstrate what happens when oxidized LDL cholesterol breaks down glycocalyx and now suddenly already within uh, half an hour there's a huge increase in the number of inflammatory cells that start sticking to the vessel wall and initiate an inflammatory uh, damage to the vessel wall. On the right hand side there's a more specific challenge of glycocalyx now using specific enzymes like hyaluronidase and heparitinase that break down specific components of the glycocalyx. And similarly as shown on the left, after local infusion of the enzyme that breaks down glycocalyx, there's a major increase in the number of adhering leukocytes and sticking inflammatory cells to the vascular wall. Now last example I'm going to show you the functional consequences of glycocalyx damage is shown in this, uh, this slide. On the left again we have a healthy vessel with a normal glycocalyx as you can see from the bushes on the inside of the luminal uh, surface of the endothelium and also you can see there is uh, virtually no space between the vessel wall and the myocardial tissue uh, cells that, that surround this vessel. And on the right hand side it shows you what happens when glycocalyx is damaged. You see there's a lot of white space developing in between the vessel wall and the tissue demonstrating leakage and accumulation of fluid and proteins in the extravascular space. Now this, this we call edema and the, the pressure that's being built up by the fluid in between the vessel wall um, and the tissue actually compresses the lumen of these capillaries. Now the consequence of that is shown in the next slide. We see uh, on the right hand side of the uh, uh, slide you see uh, that if you normalize the number of perfused microvessels to one, that an hour after enzymatic degradation of the glycocalyx, the number of perfused microvessels is reduced by 40%. That when you're exposed to a damaging agent that uh, damages your glycocalyx, causes edema and perivascular leakage, fluid leakage, you see that you, uh, you drop down in your exchange capacity and the number of perfuse microvessels is reduced by 40%. While this uh, cartoon summarizes all the functions I've discussed with you of the glycocalyx. So the, the blue strand, the seaweed on the bottom of the slide uh, demonstrates the presence of glycocalyx and it shields the vessel wall, it shields the endothelium um, thereby preventing direct contact of those flowing cells, the red blood cells, the platelets and the leukocytes uh, with the adhesion molecules that are down, deep down on the surface of the endothelium. Now several functions are displayed here. So on the left you see that glycocalyx is essential for sensing the shear forces of the flowing blood and telling the endothelial cells to start synthesizing the vasodilator nitric oxide synthase. It also binds uh, enzymes that uh, prevent the generation of oxygen radicals. So good glycocalyx is important for not only nitric oxide synthase but also a reduction in the generation of oxygen radicals. At the same time, the dense mesh that the glycocalyx uh, polysaccharides form prevent leakage of the plasma proteins and fluid across the glycocalyx and leakage out of the vessel wall. And also because of the physical dimensions of glycocalyx, which can amount up to several microns, and it's large compared to the size of the adhesion molecules for platelets and monocytes on the endothelial surface, which are typically tens of nanometers. So an intact glycocalyx mechanical prevents adhesion of those circulating cells to the vessel wall and thereby prevent activation of coagulation and inflammation. Now this is our nightmare scenario when glycocalyx is severely damaged. You see you have an impairment of nitric oxide synthase, thereby uh, a more vasoconstriction and uh, high pressure development now you see leakage of proteins and fluids causing edema and loss of perfused uh, microvessels and activation of coagulation and inflammation initiating long-term damage to the vessel wall.